When a small coolant leak ends up costing half the value of your entire car. Let's get started. This is a 2005 Buick LeSabre. It came in for a small coolant leak, and obviously we know these cars are not worth 20 grand anymore. They're worth two, three, four, and it doesn't take much for repairs to end up costing half as much as the car. This one came in, just like I mentioned, for a small coolant leak, and we're gonna talk about that here in a minute, but I wanted to make a quick announcement. Except for Hoovy from Hoovy's Garage, talking about the general public, Omega will no longer be working on domestic cars and trucks. When I first opened the business, my dream that I had was a European exotic repair shop. And over the years, we needed to fill a few spaces. We would take in domestic cars and trucks here or there to keep the schedule full. But now we are to the point where we're able to be two and three months booked out just with European and exotic cars. So we no longer need to focus on these anymore and get back to basics, back to the roots of Omega Auto Clinic, and that is European, exotic, and some upper level Asian cars. So this is going to be probably one of the last domestic cars or trucks you'll see in the shop on these videos. This one does have the venerable 3.8 that I always push to you guys. It is a bulletproof engine. However, no car on earth, even a Toyota or a Lexus, is exempt from age. This one has over 280,000 miles on it before it developed this coolant leak. So it's really gotten the life out of it. And once it is fixed, it could easily go another 100,000 miles. So is it so bad that this has happened to this car? It's like, oh, car wizard, I thought those were bulletproof. They are. There's a lot of engines out there that wouldn't make it to 50,000 or 100,000 miles without having these kinds of problems. This one's made it to 280,000 miles. So, let's show you how the small coolant leak turned into something drastic. Now we know with the Buick 3.8 in years past, they've had problems with plastic coolant elbows that go to the alternator bracket, I'll show you here in a minute. And the upgrade is these metal ones the customer was chasing a coolant leak previously, and they've done some of their own work. They put a water pump on, these upgraded elbows, and also a few other things. But I think when they installed the elbows, they accidentally cut the O-ring, and it was leaking out of one of those. But as I took some things apart, I, I saw this is much bigger than just the elbow. Let me show you. So here you can see the two elbows, one right here and one right here and they connect into this bracket. This is where your alternator actually mounts to. Coolant actually goes through your alternator bracket. See right there? The customer tried to upgrade themselves and do the, the elbows, but I think that they cut the O-ring when they installed it, and it was seeping a little bit out of this one. But as I got it apart, I started seeing coolant all the way back here, way behind the water pump, I thought, well, maybe this one's leaking. So I put a bypass pipe just to hold pressure for now. And I pressure tested it and I found something kind of bad. The way you find coolant leaks, or at least the way we do here in the shop, is pressure testing it and then watching and seeing where coolant is dripping down. This is my Mighty Vac coolant pressure tester for cooling systems. It's actually in our Amazon affiliates link in the description below if you're interested in this. But it has various different caps that fit different vehicles, the coolant reservoirs or the radiators or whatnot, and it connects to the system that way. I'll go ahead and use this one. This is the one for this car. Here's where the radiator cap goes, as you can see. We take that off, we put this in its place, lock it in, and it has a little port on top where I connect my pump, just like that. And this is just a hand-operated pump that I use and as I pump it up, you're gonna hear a noise, and then I'll show you where it's coming from. So listen. You guys hear that? That's a pretty large leak. Let's find out where's that coming from. Look at that, guys. You can see it right there, coming right out of that gasket. That is the actual timing cover 
That's not the water pump. It has nothing to do with the water pump. It's actually the housing that the water pump bolts to. Let me show you guys. So you can see our water pump was replaced. It has a new gasket, but it's not leaking there. It's actually back here. This entire cast iron housing is leaking. We had originally called the customer and told them they had the coolant elbows are leaking and they said go ahead. But then once I got it apart and I got to seeing huge puddles behind there, I was like, something else is going on here. So I pressure tested it again. As you saw, the timing cover is also leaking and it's e leaking even worse than the elbows were. So we called the customer and told them this is going to be over a grand. I mean, this is, a, this is like seven hours of work plus all the gaskets and all the pieces and parts. And they said, hey, that's better than buying a new car. We can get at least another 100,000 miles out of this thing. It's totally worth it, so go ahead. Once we get this solved, like I said, the 3.8s are bulletproof. They will get many more good miles out of this engine. I'll take a few parts off and show you guys kind of what, what it takes to get to it. As these engines are getting more age on them, we're starting to see things new that are failing that weren't common before. And one of them I'm seeing is timing cover gaskets. The water pumps, the coolant elbows, all those things are not such a big problem. I'm starting to see a lot of the timing cover itself gasket leaking. So without further ado, let's get started. Notice I didn't take that off right away. I've got a pan underneath to catch the antifreeze. Even if you drain the whole system, there's still going to be some left in the block. So it's always going to have a little splash when you remove it. But we're just getting through the layers. There's a lot of layers to this one to get the timing cover off. I'm showing you a few of those and how in-depth it can actually be. Let's go ahead and get our coolant elbows out of the way. So it looks okay. It looks like some scratch marks, but let me show you what happened upon installation. Look at that, guys. Not good. The secret to installing these is to clean out all the bores that they go into with a small wire brush so there's no debris left. And also put some silicone lubricant on the O-rings as they go in. You shouldn't be having to push them like a rubber band and force them in there. It should go like a little sound, like a popping noise, and go in smoothly. I've got a brand new set. These are, they've been scratched up and beat up. I'm not even going to put those back in and risk them leaking again. Let's go ahead and get our water pump out of the way. You see it actually has a little divot in here that's made to be pried on. Right there. There we go. This is a fairly new, almost a brand new water pump, so I'll be putting it back on. It's got a lot of life left in it. It's no reason to charge them for a new pump when it basically is a new pump. So we will be reusing that. So now that's out of the way, let's get the belt out of the way and a few other things just to give you guys an idea of what's, what's involved with a timing cover gasket on a Buick 3800. So now I've got those connectors out of the way. I have to get a special puller and pull off this harmonic balancer. There's a special 3800 puller just for this specific setup. Once I get that off, then I have to start taking a lot of bolts off that go to the timing cover. So you can see this big mount here, this is actually part of the front mount, has to come off and be moved out of the way. And then you can take the front timing cover off. Luckily, we really don't have to do much with the power steering pump. If, if you do have to remove it, you can do it through these holes. You can see I can wiggle my finger and take three, two or three bolts out. Don't unhook any of the hoses. Just move it aside. Let me guess, every one of you have a special 3800 harmonic balancer puller in your toolbox ready to go. No? Well, you can go to your local parts store. They'll have them there. You can rent one, use it to get the job done. You'll also need an installer, which is a long threaded shaft with a, a kind of a bearing style nut that goes on to put it back on. It doesn't just push back on by hand. But there's quite a bit of tear down to get the timing cover off. I've actually had a few friends stop in like 100% Jake, we actually walked in one day when we had a timing cover off and even he commented, he was like, that's quite a lot to do just for a gasket, isn't it? I was like, yes. So like I said, it's not a 30 minute job, it's kind of a seven, possibly eight hour job depending on what else you might find. One thing that'll help you is, I'll do that off camera as I finish up this job, 
I'll put this on a jack stand, remove the front wheel, and go through the wheel well to get to the harmonic balancer and a few of the other bolts. All of our lifts are tied up at the moment, and I've done this on the ground multiple times. I'm not afraid of it, so that's how you do this in your driveway. A lot of automotive repairs are about discovery. There's some times where you find something wrong, you take that apart, only to discover there's even more wrong that you couldn't see until you had it apart. Don't get mad at your mechanic when they call you a second time and the bill just went up. Because there are things that you can't see until you get it apart. This happens a lot actually with surgery during medical surgeries. I have a small operation we're going to do, but when we cut you open, we found out you have cancer. Are you going to scream at your doctor? No, that just happens sometimes. Luckily, the customer is very understanding. They said, hey, you know, I get it. Let's get this done so I can continue to drive my Buick. This is still one of the greatest engines on earth. I have serviced some of these personally that have four or 500,000 miles on them, and they still run and drive, as far as the engine's concerned, like a new car. Yes, you will have to fix things from time to time. Even on a Toyota or a Lexus, a water pump is eventually going to go out. A starter is eventually going to fail. They're not going to last for 35 million miles. Things will fail, but unlike Hyundais, which have catastrophic engine failures, actually one of my friends just texted me, their cousin is on the third engine on their Kia Sedona van in 150,000 miles. And he made a comment, it's like, it's like an abusive relationship having a Hyundai or Kia. It's bad. That's not the case with these. That's why I push these so hard in Toyotas and Lexuses. You will have some repairs from time to time, but other than that, you can just drive the thing and not worry too much about it. Definitely wanted to get a video for you guys to show you how sometimes a small little incident turns into something much larger and the price goes really fast. If you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to work on this engine or really any of the other cars in the shop, just like the uh, Mighty Vac cooling system pressure test I just used, which really isolated exactly what was wrong very quickly. Check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut. If you purchase anything there, really appreciate it. Make sure to check out Mrs. Wizard's Ways. She's got a lot of really cool videos coming out for you guys to watch there as well. And make sure to hit the subscribe button here because there's tons more videos, as you can see, waiting for you guys. Thanks for watching.